And welcome into To Your Health. If you joined us the past couple of weeks, you've known that we've been doing a lot of things that talk about different parts of your body that can be prone to diseases and even sometimes of infections that can cause you undue pain. And it can be sometimes the type of pain that makes you say, listen, I need to have something done. Our guest is Dr. Stephen Chandler. And Dr. Chandler, uh, we're going to use ENT, the, the, the uh, ear, nose, and throat. But basically, your specialty, and you are a physician and a surgeon, and Correct. you're getting more into the area of sinuses. Because right, the, exactly. The, the, let me ask this question before we get into it. Of the population, we're probably seeing more and more people that are presenting themselves with sinus problems, are you not? Yeah, we are. It's, um, it's a pervasive problem, not uh, just in, in our location, but uh, in, in the United States in general. We have mm -hmm. a significant amount of, uh, of time off um, and money that's put into the system to help people alleviate their symptoms from sinus disease mm -hmm. and allergies as well. Yeah. Now, last week we were talking about, obviously, the, the signs that you're having the problems and then some of the things you can do medically to try to address it. And if that's not working, you say then the patient will finally get to the point they say, Doctor, this is all not working. We need to do something else. That's when you're going to get into something that will be done from a surgical perspective. Now, you have, from your area, you can do it two different ways. One of them would be to take them into an operating room and operate. And the other now is a new procedure that you can do in the office also, right? Right. It, it, the, the forum is really pivotal here in trying to help patients get better quicker. That's mm -hmm. the theme, you know. Uh, you hear people talking about minimally invasive procedures. Right. And, and this is a, this is a new buzzword in medicine. Isn't it is. It? And, yes. and, and mm -hmm. it's legitimate, really, because right. we want people to get better, faster, back to work, back to their lives, mm -hmm. you know. So through the uh, engineering of these technologies, uh, we can do just that. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, able, we've been able to take some of, of the lesser invasive procedures that we would generally do in the operating room, we've been able to deliver them into a clinical forum where general anesthesia is not necessary, and we still get excellent results mm -hmm. uh, without a tremendous amount of burden on the patient in terms of their time commitment. Um, and it's worked out very well for us. Mm -hmm. Can we see how one of those procedures would work? Sure. Okay. We're going to go ahead and grab that. So, and then, in general, the way this system works, we have the patient come in. Okay. And it's about an hour uh, dedicated to the procedure. Mm. Uh, there's, we're not pressed for time. There's okay. no rush. Right. The idea is to have the patient comfortable in an environment where we can both do our jobs. The patient mm -hmm. needs to be comfortable and have confidence in the physician doing the procedure, mm -hmm. and we need the patient to be uh, free of discomfort and, right. and, and aware of what's going on so they can follow our instructions. But in general, you can expect to come in and be evaluated, and your nose will be anesthetized with both a topical uh, pledget, mm -hmm. which is a cottonoid that's okay. impregnated or um, that delivers a local anesthetic into the nose. Mm -hmm. Once that's accomplished, We'll often use an injectable material in the nose as well. And that procedure will, uh, will last probably a, between 25 and 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. During that period of time, the inside of, of the nose is perfectly suitable for any type of operation. Uh, at that point, uh, we would bring you into the operating suite in the office. Mm -hmm. It's an in-office procedure, right. so we have to refer to it as such. And the device that we use for these minimally invasive procedures is a balloon dilation device. Okay. And it's very straightforward. The patient is generally sitting upright. Uh, we will use endoscopes, which are lighted telescopes and a large video screen to visualize the exact positioning of where we are mm -hmm. in, inside the, the skull and the sinus. And once we're able to do that, we use an introducer. And I have an example of that here. Okay. The introducer is placed up into the nose. And All right. It, under, under endoscopic visualization, it's mm -hmm. placed in a location that approximates the opening of the sinus. And once that's accomplished, a, a wire is placed, a very thin wire, mm -hmm. that's very soft. Almost like a fishing wire. Fishing yeah, it's, wire. it's very similar to that. Mm -hmm. The caliber is about the same as well. It's placed into the sinus, and we can confirm its location by uh, a small light at, ah. the, at the end of the wire. Mm -hmm. Uh, once we've confirmed its location, then we actually just slide the balloon over the device huh. so that it's sitting right at the, the specific location where the sinus is most narrow and where the drainage pathway is most likely blocked. Mm -hmm. And once that uh, is precisely positioned, 
we just inflate the balloon and it dilates the sinus pathway open. Uh-huh, and then it, leave, it lets the blockage move. It, it opens the blockage and it actually causes very focal micro fractures of the bones mm -hmm. that, that surround that opening that cause this procedure to be considered permanent. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a long lasting procedure. And while the balloon is in there, we can often irrigate through with the sinus and remove any debris that's present as well. Mm. So basically the sinus did not shrink. It was the, it was the infection or whatever is in there that caused the blockage at that point. Exactly. The sinus could be a fairly large cavity. If you think about a wine bottle, for mm -hmm. example, you have, you have a wine bottle and you, you have a volume that's contained within it. Right. And you also have the ability to stop up that wine bottle. Mm -hmm. Well, if you can't take the cork out of the sinus opening, yeah, you can't get the debris out. Yeah. Start it's a, it's a, that's the analogy, right? So mm -hmm. you take the cork out, you open the sinus up, and air can get in and the contents can get out. And our sinuses function best when they have air mm -hmm. in them. So when they're doing this procedure in the office, obviously it's done in the office. Once the, uh, uh, and I'll call it the anesthetic, is, mm -hmm. is removed from the, the patient's actually ready to go then, aren't they? Just like going to the dentist. Just like going to the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, except they can't. They put, they put nothing underneath the pillow to get something in the morning from the tooth fairy. Oh, no. No, but it's a, it's a great way to do it. Well, good. We appreciate you doing this. Um, your practice, g give them the official name. Uh, well, the, our practice is Montgomery Otolaryngology. Okay, and that's a very fancy word for... Montgomery ENT. ENT uh, for oh, your nose. Your nose and throat. Your nose and right. throat. And we actually have a web uh, site that you can actually Brand new. see. It's, it's our new our new website. You can actually come and look at uh, videos of us doing these procedures on patients. And uh, it's Montgomery Odo. O T O. Dot com. Dot com. Montgomery, Montgomery Odo. Odo. Dot com. We'll have that on the screen. And we'll be right back right after this.